So students, once again, we are into another top position. So Dr. Anisha Chatterjee is there who she has secured AML rank three and CML rank eight. Anisha, welcome. So Thank how do you feel? Sir, I'm very happy and relieved, mostly relieved, sir. So you just finished your, I mean, your MD in 2020 for December only. You were, you were telling yes, me that. So uh, it was almost along with uh, your, like, soon after the MD, you were able to crack the INA, that with uh, such a very good rank. Uh, and uh, can you just introduce yourself? You did for your, where are you from, your family, all those things? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, I'm Anisha Chatterjee. I'm from West Bengal. And I did my MBBS from Medical College, Kolkata. And I completed my MD medicine from Jitmar Pondicherry. And your family? Uh, my father is an engineer. My mother is a general surgeon. Okay, she's also working in Kolkata earlier. Uh, yes, sir. Right. So, uh, <clears throat> so how was your journey? Like, uh, you are a pressure. So how was your uh, how was your need and how was your journey with INA? And what was your plan when you, like, do you have any plan when you're doing your MD days, first year, second year, third year, and after the MD, when was your exam? Sir, actually, I decided on doing uh, DM towards the end of my uh, MD period. And actually, I had given November INI, but I written a rheumatology at that point of time because I thought I wanted rheumatology. Then, after my MD got over in uh, around in February, I decided that uh, I was more into, neuro in, into neurology and I started studying for neurology since uh, February. Then uh, March, we had NEET SS, so I had to study the general medicine part also. But uh, NEET SS did not go that well for me. I got 1059 uh, rank, and with that, I did not get into, I was getting state college, and I did not want a state college. So after that, uh, I was very worried because I had not taken a seat, whether I had made a right decision or I had made a mistake about that. Then finally, uh, NEET INI happened, and now I'm very relieved, sir. Yeah, and... Uh... Uh, you were telling that uh, like uh, uh, you were initially interested in rheumatology. So what made you to yes, like towards rheumatology and then you changed to neuro? What what happened? Sir, while well, studying for the okay. one more camera, she was also the same thing. Like she she got AML one. She was also initially thinking of rheumat, then shifted to neuro. So like, just curious, how 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 what did it happen? Sir, while studying for final MD, for a final exams, for an MD final exams, I realized that uh, neurology is one of the very few subjects that I can visualize happening. As in, I can logic out everything that is happening in neurology. I can pinpoint the lo local uh, lesions. I can localize the lesions. And uh, actually, my college also has a big part to play in this because in Jipmer, we can handle all neurology cases. Other than movement disorders, mostly we have seen other all other cases in our uh, PG days and we are allowed to deal with the cases as we want to deal with them and accordingly proceed. So I think some of the interest uh, stem from there also. Yeah, I knew that since last few years interviews, I had interviewed many Egyptians uh, in I, like in PG they are there, uh, in uh, Jipmer itself a few are there, in AIMS yes, they are there. So I felt like in Jipmer there uh, basically many are going towards neurology and I think uh, Pradeep sir and Vaibhav sir, right? Uh, they are there in you know, yes, in, sir, they are there. yeah, they are actually both good. Like Pradeep sir was our senior's examiner when I was doing my DM, my senior batch examiner was Pradeep sir. So I was along with him to take him to the uh, um, the, the railway station airport and all. So I know knew him through that bit. So they should be very good to inspire you all to go into neurology. So uh, how was your preparation? So how what was your basic source of preparation during the MD days? Jitmar will be very busy. So how was it uh, in MD days and how was it uh, like for preparation for NEET and INA? Sir, so for that uh, MD final exam itself, we had studied some of the notes from Maro, like uh, manage for dementia, then uh, uh, dementia, then cranial nerves and uh, neuroophthalmology. Mostly we studied from Maro, so that part had already covered. Uh, other than that, uh, the details of epilepsy, like epilepsy syndromes and uh, stroke in details, management of strokes, the area of the brain involved, how to manage a particular area. This and all I studied after my MD finals were over. I started in February, it took me some uh, one month to complete all the videos. Uh, uh, the stroke, epilepsy and EEG, I think these three specifically I completed after my MD exams. Rest of it mostly including uh, uh, meningitis and infections part are covered during my uh, MD finals itself. And uh, af and I started solving MCQs around February, sir. So completed that uh, INISS uh, neurology question bank and some of the general medicine question bank also. 
So how did the each thing help you? Like you were watching videos, you were watching solving MCQ, and so you were doing some of the other parts of the marrow or other like you were along with you will be studying with your like your, your for your MD also because you're a fresher. So how did those things help in your INA and uh, in your NEET? Uh, actually, sir, when we're studying particularly for MD finance, we miss out some of the final parts of the subjects. Like uh, we don't manage stroke properly. Like we don't uh, study about thrombolysis indications, contraindications for our final MD exams. Similarly, when a patient is coming with uh, GTCS or uh, status epilepticus, we have managed status epilepticus in uh, medicine emergency, but uh, we have not managed it as per the neurocritical society guidelines. So this and all I learned while studying for INI. That is after my MD finals were done with. And actually, uh, I, for me, studying is different and applying it in MCQ is different. So for that, I need that MCQ practice, for which I had to consult the QBank, sir. Otherwise, I'm, I have some problem in coordinating between the two. So once I solve the QBank, things become more clearer to me, sir. So how was the preparation for a medicine part? Like medicine part, uh, especially for need, you have to prepare in a different mm -hmm. way, no? So how was it? Uh, what was the primary source for uh, like a medicine as well as neurology? Sir, uh, for that uh, neat part, for the general medicine part, I'd already given uh, MD finance recently. So some of it I retained from them. And uh, other than that, uh, from Harrison, specific parts of Harrison I read up for need assess. And I saw that the marrow cube, Harrison based marrow cube, and most of it I've solved. Uh, other than I think infectious diseases and certain other chapters, critical care, other than that, I've solved the entirety of work. Uh, the general medicine part and uh, for certain topics like rheumatology and uh, respiratory medicine i studied from marrow also sir even for my md finals okay so uh, and again for your md practical exam is a totally different scenario because the practical exam is totally different from what you're preparing for neat but ina even from stage two has a lot of practical questions but it is totally different uh, it's more of clinical scenarios rather than clinical examinations so how was your uh, basic thing like how you preparing for your uh, md final exam practical basically so did uh, did marrow or any other coaching material helped you and did that preparation for a clinical part which helped you in stage 2 uh, yes, sir. That preparation helped in stage two because uh, what happens in our college is that for an MD finals, we have, we have given a long case. That will be a CNS long case. In my case, it was cerebral ataxia. So the differentials of cerebral ataxia, how to approach a case of acute ataxia, subacute chronic ataxia. For this and all, I had to consult marrow notes. And uh, similarly, when I got into interview round, my first question was approach to paraplegia, acute onset paraplegia in a young male. So for that, I had to apply my clinical knowledge, how to differentiate whether it's a new element type of paraplegia or element type of paraplegia based on clinical examination, based on history. Uh, this we were used to doing already during our MD practicals, how to differentiate it based on history and examination, and then accordingly make our differentials. And uh, since the time limit that we get for MD practicals is 45 minutes for one long case. Uh, so we have to think very fast. So that came into a lot of help during my uh, viva in this interview round also, sir. Because we are given some one or one and a half minutes for each case. Uh, so first case was this acute onset paraplegia, for which uh, practical knowledge, uh, I, I approached it like uh, signs and symptoms of human will be present or element present accordingly I proceeded with the patient. Second question was chronic headache in a young female. For that, I had to go with my theoretical knowledge, sir. So that was, again, I had to consult marrow approach to chronic headache with papal edema. And how, uh, how much time was provided uh, for, uh, for viva? So uh, actually, I was the last candidate, so uh, I got around one or one and a half minutes for both questions. So total of three, three minutes maybe, sir. So basically, you are the last candidate. Sir. So there was a confusion among the students that uh, when you come to the last part, uh, it is difficult to get in. That is actually not there, right? Because I was interviewing uh, the rank one also. She was also in the last part, and she was telling the examiners were very cordial and they were very patient to listen, even until it was very late because they were running the exams this morning. So uh, again, how did you prepare? Like, did you do any preparation or anything for a stage two? Uh, and uh, uh, what about the uh, one more question on the cellulose later? So how was uh, stage two uh, preparations? Uh, so for stage two, I went through my uh, practical notes for neurology, the same ones that we studied for MD finals. And uh, I had collected the interview questions from previous batches. And I attended your session also, so the online session that you conducted for uh, revision of interview questions. And actually, my parents helped me out a lot uh, 
I used to conduct, I used to try giving mock interviews when I was at home. So I used to set my timer at around five minutes and see how much of the topic I can, I can cover in five minutes. And uh, the, how was the stage two interview session we did? Uh, like whether it helped you or like it was very like this one, one more, one day ago, right? Yes, sir. One day ago, we did, yeah. how, how did, it, did it help you or some way? So actually, uh, Stage two preparation is very different from stage one preparations. Had I not attended the session, I would not have realized that. Uh, the approach is completely practical oriented. How you are approaching a case, that will matter. Not your uh, final you know, final knowledge of the details that they have already assessed during our MCQ round. So this I would not have understood had I not attended the session, sir. Yeah, basically uh, in stage two, they want, just like your theory viva of your MD exam. They just want yes, your concept how is your concept how are you going to approach they don't want single one and one answer they want how you are going to approach the questions are also very open-ended questions it's a long questions all are all long questions only and one more thing like uh and it's not about uh need i mean not about ina uh because you just you're just fresher from md medicine so how was it for inss because i mean need assess where you had this pattern of 50 50 like A, B sessions, uh, only time limit was there, whether it was affected your performance during the need, because uh, the first part of the exam was very tougher question. So everyone got 10 step during that. Yes, sir. How was it? So the same thing happened with me also. The section A of that paper, it had all long questions, some six, seven liners, and they had uh, the values. They will write down values in between the questions. So it was not like I could skip the first line or I could skip the last, uh, last or the middle part of the question. I had to read the entire one. So that first section was a time crunch. Third section was comparatively uh, well balanced. So third section did not have much uh, of the time issue. But I think there was no point of dividing into new sections, sir. It makes time management more difficult for us. And that yeah, 10 minutes I saved in third part, I would have used in my first part. Yeah. Actually, um, um, that was something which affected most of the students. Those who are very, I mean, very good, they prepared well also. They did bad in it, not just because the question were very weird the same, but it is basically uh, the, the, the presence of mind mattered. At that time, we, you, any, anyone will get uh, like tense because you are you are seeing very lengthy question in the beginning. You find it difficult, but that is why INA is a better thing. Like INA, the question is always almost consistent. They yeah, they ask yes. from the same pattern, or at least from the if, if you study the subject, you will get it. But need it is very tough. The very broad specialty you have to study, and they may ask very in-depth questions from certain specialty randomly. So it's actually very a little bit tough to prepare for need. That is what I felt. Yes, sir. And uh, like, uh, like, what is your plan right now? Like, uh, uh, have you decided like uh, whether to go to which institute? I think only uh, five or CML five or six seats are there. Uh, five, five only, sir. Yeah. And the man's Chitma no seats are there this time. Yeah, this time. Even Chitra, there's one seat. Most likely, I don't have issue with the language barrier, sir. Yeah, you're there in for yeah. Uh, But mostly, maybe I will go with Delhi. I'm yet to decide, sir. Yeah, yeah. You have to uh, decide based on a lot of things, like uh, not just academics, the, yes. the, 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 how you can travel. Uh, how to manage things because it's not like going to MD after PG, like after MBBS. It's slightly different. You have to give some personal issues, some place for those things also. So, uh, so all together, um, it was actually like you also had an improvement in your rank when you compared to like AML to CML. I mean, CML to AML. So that was that uh, you did well, better. Like many actually had gone back. Those who have better CML, CML has gone back in the AML. So that is where you, even though you had that in the last part, you did a really good job in an interview. So how did you approach the interview? Like like some questions, if they ask, you don't know it. How did you, how did you, how did you perform it? How did you manage it? Actually, sir, sir, the interviewer, he told in the beginning, only if you don't know the answer, you tell, I'll, shift the, I'll change the question. But the first question itself was approached to Paraplegian and approached it the same way I'm used to approaching cases in my ward or when I'm yeah. seeing cases in an emergency. So I started with, uh, sir, I'm going to differentiate between UMN and LMN. I'll ask history for uh, specifically for cord and bladder involvement, sensor involvement. So once he realized that I knew the rest of the answer, uh, he told me to skip and go to the final points such as uh, what will be differentials in case there is cord involvement. If it is a transverse myelitis, what differentials will you consider? Then. Uh, 
here again, when, when once I started answering, he used to change the question to how will you approach the diagnosis? So once he figured out that I knew the answer or if the approach was correct, since time crunch was there, he was changing the question, sir. And uh, so about the marrow, you use marrow. So uh, like, which, like, we want to ask you that on the neuro and non-neuro specialties, because you went to the neuro exam. So neuro and non-neuro neuro specialities, which all videos did you did you like among that? or? Sir, first I tell uh, cardiology, sir. Cardiology, almost, almost all the videos, specifically the valvular heart disease part, because uh, it is difficult to understand the physiology behind valvular heart disease. And sir has explained the physiology very nicely in his videos. Second, I read up was the rheumatology parts, so specifically vasculitis and uh, immunodeficiency diseases. And third thing that I watched from Marrow was uh, some of the respiratory medicine videos, like the ones on bronchial asthma and uh, lung malignancy. What about neuro? Did you watch all videos or you selected? selected all, most? Sir, all. So, out of the neuro videos, which all things like you, uh, you, you feel like it is good and which all areas you want to improve? Okay. So the most useful part is that approach to stroke. Uh, second one is this uh, approach to EEGs, EEGs and MCs that we are not used to seeing in our wards also. Like uh, at uh, JR levels, we are not used to interpreting EEGs by ourselves, sir. Uh, other than that, sir, uh, this dementia, actually I studied everything from marrow only, sir. Certain so, questions such as sometimes they'll ask about these uh, metabolic disorders. That was already covered in the marrow Q bank, so I did not face much difficulties with that. So, uh, like uh, you, you did for the high high yield series or just with the uh, major marrow videos? You have you watched the high yield series? Major, also? sir. No, sir. I watched the major ones because I already started before my MD exam, so I covered a lot of it before. I know. Actually, high yield as you. Actually, I had kept few things in the high yield also, which has actually previously asked in the neat. Some are not discussed in the. Major part also is there in the high yield. I think the miscellaneous part. Uh, so uh, that that for those who are preparing for need, that will be useful because some questions which are, we have not covered in the major part is covered there. So uh, so all the best for the future. And do you have any suggestions for us? Like whether anywhere we want to improve, like you can tell that we, this would be better to come and change or any add yes, any topics whether it is too much or whether it is uh, we have to add something else. No, sir. If you could include a separate chapter on metabolic disease other than the Q-band part. Because if you are going through Q-band, then you have to go to the particular question only, then we understand, okay, this uh, this includes this particular theoretical part. So that uh, we will try and again. Somebody asked me to, like, uh, today only somebody called, uh, called me and asked me to include image in part also. So we will uh, try to include those. Uh, we will be coming up with something new. So all the best for the future. And uh, you do you do you do you have any plans for going to any particular specialty? Because being in Jipmer, you will have some exposure to some, oh, the, yes, uh, some specialty of neurology. So do you have any interest in that? Because you have might have exposure in uh, Jipmer. Sir, I want to go to demyelination, sir. Demyelination. Yes. Um, in Jipmer, there is neuroinflammation is there or no? it's not there? Not yet there, sir. Yeah, they have. I think uh, neuromuscular ribosar is neuromuscular, right? Oh, yes, sir. So, uh, all the best for the future. And if you, you. If you go to Delhi Ames, you will get a lot of opportunities to uh, do the degree with uh, the, the best of the India. And also, you will get a lot of uh, opportunity to get exposure and opportunities to do the PDF, postdoctoral okay. fellowships and neuroinflammation yes. and all. So, uh, I think that is that is some of the best thing, and I'm very happy to tell you that uh, uh, I, we actually from the marrow part we congratulate you to get uh, so like uh, AML three is not an easy thing, like especially uh, to crack after two rounds that happened after the need and that was a fresher. That is something really really commendable. So, uh, congrats to you. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Sir.